Hi, this is John Reynolds with Solomon Colors and Brickform. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the SM Pro, which is a multi purpose grout mix that we mix with a polymer that usually goes through a spray gun, but I'm going to show you some other applications that, are, that go along with it as well. So this is a slab that we're going to be doing today. Once you get this slab prepared, please reference our technical data sheets and uh, the surface preparation guidelines in there and the uh, videos that we have online. Once you get the slab prepared, we're going to apply some of our primer. And the primer can be rolled on or sprayed on and once it dries, we'll be ready for our base coat application. Okay, so we primed our surface. Now what we're getting ready to do is mix up our base coat. The base coat is a thin application that's designed to cover the entire surface, fill in minor imperfections, and give us a base for any pattern work that we may want to apply, and also for our spray to stick well to the slab. We've got our polymer here, our grout, and our liquid colors, and basically we're going to take our polymer, and stick it in the bucket and our liquid color so we go liquid plus liquid we mix that up and then we're going to add our dry powder remember to pre-blend your polymer prior to adding to the mixing vessel measure and add to the mixing vessel always remember to shake your colorants prior to adding to the polymer and always remember the rule liquid to liquid first mix thoroughly and then add your dry powder Mix thoroughly, allow to stand for five minutes, and then remix prior to placement. Now that our primer's dry, we're going to squeegee on a base coat. Again, this base coat is going to fill in minor imperfections in the slab, as well as provide us a base for applying any type of pattern work, and uh, giving us a superior bond when the project is complete. At this point, basically what we're doing is rubbing this slab down, getting rid of any trowel marks, any squeegee marks, or any little, uh, little uh, concrete drips and drops that, that uh, may have gotten installed uh, during the base coat application. Let's just say your slab is very cracked up, and it's not in a position that it would be easy to tear out and replace. Oftentimes, with this product, it's very simple to create pattern work that integrates those cracks in. So, let's just say this pencil mark represents a crack in the slab. What can we do to camouflage this crack so that when it comes back, the homeowner isn't really discouraged or upset? Basically what we can do at this point is take this 3 quarter inch pattern tape and follow that crack. Once you've prepared the slab and uh, put your base coat on, the crack will shadow through. You'll be able to see where that crack is. Bottom line is, I can take this crack and I can integrate it in with pattern work and create a rock pattern so when the crack does come back it will be easy to repair and uh, not be visually obtrusive. At this point I'm measuring out for a brick border. The brick line tape is a tape lined every four inches so the creation of brick borders is very simple without having to use a tape measure every time. This product is a paper stencil. Some of these come sticky backs and some of them do not have sticky backs. This particular product does not have a sticky back. So I cut it and tape it into place. So here's our slab that shows several different methods for creating pattern work with the spray system. Now we're mixing up product for the spray application. Follow the mixing guidelines addressed earlier in the video. And always remember liquid to liquid first, then add the powder, blend, allow to stand, and then remix prior to placement of product. We're going to be using a uh, continuous run compressor like this one here. This is typically used in the drywall industry for spraying popcorn ceilings or spraying walls. Um, the nice thing about continuous run compressors is when you're out on a big job, a bladder compressor tends to, to uh, slow down and heat up. So with a compressor that's designed to run continuously, you don't run the risk of having issues with your compressor breaking down in the middle of the project. I'm also uh, going to be using a craft hopper gun. This is a, a product that has been um, designed to shoot cementitious materials. It has a hopper that allows you to spray it uh, down without material falling out. It also has a flexible neck that allows you to spray vertically as well. 
comes with a number of different orifices. Um, I use the quarter inch conical tip, uh, but that's personal preference. So we'll be using this today uh, to spray down our material. I've loaded the hopper and now I'm adjusting the pressure. Higher pressure results in a finer spray, lower pressure results in a blobbier or more textury spray. Spray the brick border and you can see I'm moving and I'm not spending too much time in one area. If you spend too much time in one area you can end up with a lot of blobs in the concrete like what I'm going to show you right here. You can see as I spray more and more material the material gels together. This is not a desirable look for the spray system. That's why you keep moving and create a nice consistent uniform spray across the slab. Come back as the moisture begins to leave the overlay material, you come back and hit it again. On this board, I'm showing how you can do what they call a knockdown technique. So we're spraying the material out here and allowing it to set to a certain point. Once the gloss has left the surface, that's when you know it's ready for troweling. We're going to hit it with a pool trowel to knock it down. Installations in the field of this type typically require a sprayer, and somebody following in golf spikes or spike shoes to do the knockdown process. In addition to the spray knockdown technique, the SM Pro can be troweled on and textured, such as in this application with our border. Simply trowel on a thin layer of the product, and then you can work a pool trowel to create the texture. Here a little figure eight pattern creates texture, but there are endless ways of creating texture in the SM Pro. Broom and blow off any overspray from when you sprayed the border color. When spraying a paper stencil, hold the hopper gun high so the air pressure does not lift the stencil. Once you have some weight on the stencil, it will stay in place better and you will be able to spray to your desired coverage. Remember to always have the hopper gun moving to avoid over applying material. As we finish up the slab here, remember earlier in the video where we discussed the knockdown technique. This is one way to finish this product. Another way is, is to add highlight colors. Contrasting colors work best. Allow your material to harden and then remove the masking from the sprayed on borders and begin with the lightest colors first. Here the base color is added to the border. Next I mix up two contrasting colors, terracotta and nutmeg. I apply the material by holding the hopper gun high. I use short bursts with the trigger fully depressed. As with spraying, consistency is more important than actual technique when highlighting. Okay, so here we are. We've applied our spray mix. On this border, we troweled on the material. Here, we applied a paper type stencil. There, we used our rock uh, pattern that we created by hand, trying to show you how to integrate in a pattern. And then over here, we've got our brick border. The slab is starting to dry out. You can see how it's drying here. It's a little wet still in here. Uh, out in the field, we want to wait until it's dry before we start pulling tape and, and revealing the pattern. But we're going to go ahead and start now and show you what this looks like and uh, see how this pattern looks. Okay, so we've got our slab dried out. What I like to do at this point uh, as a finishing point, because with our spray mix, there's a lot of high and low spots. It's pretty rough right now. Uh, and those high points are actually weak points in the spray mix. So by taking a rub stone and rubbing off the top, it achieves two things. A, it's going to give me a repair kit for future repairs, and I'll show you about that in a minute. But it also takes off the weakest point of the overlay. So once we get done rubbing this down, we're going to blow it, we're going to sweep up uh, the project and then we'll um, blow it all off. We'll have a surface that's really very well prepared to handle foot traffic, light vehicular traffic, um, plastic and aluminum snow shovels, and, uh, and, and your normal wear and tear a whole lot better than if we left it like this and sealed it. Now you see I've taken these crumblies and uh, put them into a bag. I give this to the customer and what this is, this is a repair kit. This has all the original colors of the project and basically if the customer uh, drags some metal 
across the surface and gouges the surface or if a crack should reappear. What we can do, for example, say they gouge the surface. What we can do is once the slab has been sealed, we can take our gouge, we can put a bead of sealer in it, and then we take our colors and we sprinkle them back over the surface to hide the crack or the gouge. So this is your uh, repair kit. Hand it to the customer and talk to them about uh, being able to do repairs. Make sure that they maintain the surface. Um, uh, the project will probably need to be resealed every two to three years depending on which sealer you use. Um, if you're using our gem seal, if you're using the poly seal, those are solvent based acrylics. You probably want to uh, check on the project about every two to three years if you're using the polyastic, maybe uh, five years, depending on the application. Obviously, traffic is going to have a bigger impact on the uh, surface. Uh, if you're in a commercial setting, you may have to reseal more often than that. Residential, though, usually two to three years is fine with those, uh, those two sealers I just mentioned. This is a shot of our final project. Two coats of sealer have been applied. This is our area where we fixed with the crumblies. See how it blends in seamlessly. This is our crack repair area. See how it integrates in with the pattern work nicely. This is our troweled on border along with the speckled spray mix overlay. And this is a shot of the area that we use a paper stencil. Broom finishing is another option with the SM Pro. Often a customer may be more interested in a repaired concrete surface rather than a decorative surface. Once a slab has been repaired, a thin final coat can be applied over a prime surface with a soft rubber squeegee. A dry finishing broom can then be used to create the texture. Be sure to use a dry broom and also wipe away any excess material from the broom after each pass. Seal when dry.